All right, we are in for a real treat this afternoon. It's July 4th here in the States. A few days ago was Canada Day, moving day up in Canada. And our next guest is a very successful musician and also a YouTube channel host. Yes, you can play guitar. His name is Brian. We've been longtime friends and supporter and viewer of his channel. And uh, he's here to talk about Whatever's on his mind, and we can uh, ask him. Thanks, Brian, for uh, tuning in to Mus Musicians Reveal. Absolutely a pleasure, Joe. Very, very honored to be here today. Now, now um, I'm looking at the background. You got a cool background with the, the rack of guitars and yes. all different. You got amps and all sorts yeah. of stuff. Even keyboards, I see to the right, and well, my right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got keyboards happening over here too. Yeah, my little do recording do setup. Do you do most of your recording right in that room? Yes. Yeah, for sure. And most oh, yeah. of my recording now is for my YouTube channel. Okay. And the YouTube channel, let's go back to the infancy of the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, was, was it during the pandemic that it started? So, uh, you know, uh, Joe, I had a, a number of years of my life that were very tumultuous and uh, would make a good Hollywood script. Mm -hmm. So I won't get into it too much, but I was... Um, uh, I actually started the channel in August of 2020, but my home life uh, was not particularly good. I, I was with someone who had mental illness, borderline personality disorder. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all due respect to people who suffer from that, but it just it was it just wasn't cohesive to doing a YouTube channel. So, uh, you know, I, I had exited that relationship, got my life on track, and in August of 2021, I things were good. And I'm like, you know, I really want to focus on this. So I consider when I started the channel, August of 2021 mm -hmm. and uh, my initial, because I I'd played guitar forever. I've been a guitar instructor forever. Um, my initial kind of goal was to kind of be like an educator, like, like maybe someone along the lines of like a Rick Beato or something like that. Uh, and then, but then we kind of got into the reaction videos and then people seem to gravitate towards that with me. Now, now you are currently you still are an instructor for guitarists as guitarists as well, right? I do actually. Yes, uh, people yeah. uh, think that you know once you get over twenty thousand subscribers on YouTube, you make tons of money. That's not always the case. No. I do have a full time job. I, do, <laughs> I teach guitar. Uh, I teach bass guitar. I teach uh, a lot of different things, uh, advanced composition theory, all that kind of stuff. And I'm very. It's a serious matter, so I don't just like accept anybody for lessons. Right, right. So, so when you were starting out with the guitar lessons and, and getting the resume for that, how how did you go about that? Getting uh, the word out, uh, like way, way back when I started uh, doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe quickly go up to what you're doing now. So all my all my um, education with music and guitar was all private, like through private lessons. I've studied with a lot of different guitar instructors. Some people who had their PhDs. Uh, but I'd actually, um, I went to college, I, I was an electronics uh, technician, so I was working in high tech. Um, I'm, I'm a type A personality. I'm, I like to get things done. I don't like BS. I don't, uh, I don't like politics in the sense of in the workplace. Like I, I don't, uh, I function better on my own. So I remember, um, mm. in high tech, it was kind of up and down all the time. And, and you know, if, if a company lost contracts, then. People would get laid off and there was never really any security, but I was teaching, I was playing professionally on weekends and I was teaching part-time. And then uh, the last company I'd worked for in the, in the late nineties, I, uh, they had a hard time and I made it to the fifth or sixth round of, um, layoffs. And I remember saying to myself, I don't care what I have to do. If I can just squeeze out a living, uh, you know, teaching guitar and playing professionally and living on a mattress and eating bagels, I'll be, I'll be okay. I just right, don't right. want to do this and beating the system, maybe so to speak. So I did that for many years, played in a lot of regional bands and uh, I had my own music school at one point. Um, I think I had over a hundred students. I had some instructors working for me. And then, um, so I'm going to say about 10 years ago, uh, I had a YouTube channel, but I didn't get YouTube. Like I, it was more just to promote my, 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 business locally for students. Like I, I remember seeing like Marty Schwartz and, and Justin Guitar and all those 
uh, guys who now have massive YouTube channels. But I remember at the time, I remember thinking, man, these guys are dumbasses posting their lessons for free on YouTube. What's this about? <laughs> and now I get it. But uh, So anyway, I, I did that for a number of years. And then I had a, a few difficult years there, some uh, big changes and some things happened in my life where I took a break from the guitar for a couple of years. But I knew coming back, I uh, um, it was what I wanted to do again. I missed it. And uh, it's my passion. And, and uh, then I started going with YouTube. Yeah, and you've built up quite the following, and we've yeah. we've followed your journey. Yes, you can play guitar. Brian is with us, and you know you going when you were building up the thousand subscribers. We were talking about that, and you you actually did a show like a celebratory show on it, right? With all yeah. all your fans, and you read people's names and everything. You, you know, yeah. you make it. You make at least. I think it's definitely you're very personable with your channel, and yeah. it comes across. Yeah. Uh when I when I started my channel, I you know, I I made it a point to try and make myself think of what it's like to be on the other side. So mm -hmm. I remember, you know, I have my favorite YouTube channels, and I know what it's like um, when I would make a comment and it never got acknowledged. Uh, now, even with some of the bigger channels, I think my following is big enough that when I do make a comment, they might they'll take some of the bigger channels will take the time to acknowledge me, mm -hmm. but. Uh, when I would do that, or some, or even you'll even see on Instagram, I have an Instagram account, but I'm not really a big Instagram guy, but, uh, you know, some famous people, like they never acknowledge their followers, their fans and stuff. I don't like to use the word fan, but mm -hmm. I told myself, I said, you know, no matter what, I got to make an effort to acknowledge these people because I would think this person thought enough of watching this, this video and they took 10 minutes to watch it and they took another five minutes to write a comment or um, yeah, it still kind of blows my mind. So I would make the right. point of initially I'd respond to every comment personally. And then I had a period a little over a year ago where I took three hours one morning and I was responding to every comment. I had a good friend of mine, Mark, uh, from, uh, England. He told me, he said, dude, you're not going to be able to do that forever. <laughs> so, uh, we, we did a video a few weeks ago about, we set a timer for five minutes and I just scrolled through all the comments. Uh -huh. So, Right, a, a, a twenty some thousand subscriber channel. How many comments you get? And I just scrolled really quickly for five minutes, and it still didn't even touch. The uh, wow. So what I try and do now yeah. is uh, I try to be very good when people message me, mm -hmm. or um, I do a reading your comments because I think that's really important to kind of acknowledge there are human beings out there that are taking the time to watch your channel and some of the comments that people will write. Like, you right. know, it's amazing. Something and like they must have taken them a half an hour to do that. So I can at least say, Hey, how are you doing? Thank you. I appreciate it. Right, right. I never, I never want to lose sight of that. Yeah, and definitely, I mean, you're you're continually building up uh, your viewership and everything. And let let's uh, mention about your Patreon channel, which you started. Uh what was yeah. the reason to start it? And uh tell us how people can can sign up for that as well. Um, so I'd heard of Patreon. Like it, the thing is with YouTube for me, it's a, it, I'm still learning. It's a learning process with everything. Uh, so I got over a thousand subscribers and then I, uh, I, I had some people saying, you know, you should start a Patreon. You should start a Patreon. I'm like, yeah, I've heard of Patreon. I, I'm not really quite sure what it is. So then I researched it and I had a lot of people saying, Hey, if you do a Patreon, I'll join. So mm -hmm. then I got into understand the, the whole thing of, um, putting in extra content. Sometimes if I do a reaction video, uh, it gets blocked by YouTube. So when it does, I just move it over. I put it on my Patreon. It's one of the perks of, and then, so my Patreon community grew. It's still small, it's modest, but it's, it's a good bunch of people. But I also started a guitar Patreon. So I have two Patreon communities, okay. one for reactions. Uh, so like for reactions, I'm like, so I get thousands of requests a month. I can't right. do all of them. Right. But if someone joins my Patreon, I try and make it a priority to get to theirs before mm -hmm. the thousands in the comment section but i also have a guitar community uh, it's a bit smaller but it's for people that are into guitar they want the extra content uh extra lessons they can download uh, guitar tabs pdf files of lessons and all that other stuff we got some cool stuff going on uh with that as well yeah another another thing i really enjoy about your channel is that it, it seems that you dig deep into other guitar players on on youtube that you know i i didn't know about and you bring to light and and a few of them come to mind talk about the young cat from indonesia oh and, yeah and yeah and and uh is it a japanese girls group 
Oh, love bites. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're, how how did you come into contact with them? So in the comments, uh, they got mentioned a lot. You got to check this banner. You got to check this banner. And again, I try and keep my reactions for my patrons. One of the downsides of having doing reactions. Well, on my channel, I do reactions, interviews, guitar lessons too. It's not just reactions, but um, so uh, for a long time, I did a deep dive on Prince, which is I'm still doing. I do a bit more of that content more now on Patreon, mm -hmm. uh, but um, when you have so many, when you start seeing someone in the comment section saying you got to, if you see someone mention a band a thousand times, eventually you want to say, okay, I better check this band out. Right. So I, I remember one day, so, okay, Love Bites. Okay, I'll check it out. And my God, that first song, I think it's called Breaking the Wall. It just blew me away. I'm like, you know, and I love, I mean, I love all styles of music, but and I'm much more open-minded. But that virtuoso guitar metal guy in me goes, oh my God, this is fantastic. These guys okay. are amazing. Hey, have you heard from the band at all? I've no, no, okay. not yet. What I like to do is when I, um, you know, when there's bands that I want to eventually interview, Mm -hmm. uh, I want to get myself up to speed. So there's some bands. Nightwish from Finland are an extremely popular band. I'm doing a bit of a deep dive into that. I'm keeping my mm -hmm. deep dive with Prince going. Um, and like Love Bites, I want to get myself more up to uh, speed and educated. Thankfully, with Prince, when we were doing, and we're still going to do some interviews mm -hmm. to people kind of from the Prince history. I, you know, I have a good friend, the Solitary Adventure. He, right. he joins me in my interviews because he's he's been amazing for me because – I, for me, remembering names and chronological orders and stuff, that's kind of hard for me. But uh, when we interviewed Morris Hayes, like he was great on that end where mm -hmm. I was good on the technical musical end. So right. it kind of worked really good. So he's been a big help that way. But uh, someone like Prince, he's got a massive history. Like I don't think anyone could ever contact, interview, and talk to everyone that he's been involved with. No, no. And and you guys, you guys have a great rapport, the solitary yeah. adventure. And yeah. I mean, I, I really enjoyed the Morris. I had Morris on when they were doing, they were out in Vegas for a residency. That was yeah. a few years ago, but you guys had a nice sit down with him extended. And yeah. you know, that, that was, he, that was, was great was watching. Guy. Yeah. He, he, I mean, Amazing. musical director and, you know, coming into the group and, you know, and he's when we a, talk about that with perspectives too, like when we had Scotty Baldwin on, Scotty Baldwin. Oh yeah, he's another good one. Yeah, yeah he, he was a sound engineer for Prince. He was a sound engineer for Lady Gaga, Earth, Wind, and Fire. So for me, when I played in regional bands, you know, I had my own, eventually I got my own mixing board and I, I learned about how to mix sound and stuff. So I'm just thinking, God, I would love to sit beside Scotty Baldwin, watching right. him work at night and just watch him work the board. Yeah. And he so. even did... Um, towards the end of Prince before he passed away, he did some of the piano and microphone shows. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Yeah. I think, until they... I think it was, yeah. I, I don't remember a hundred percent, but it was during when he was working with Prince in New Zealand, he goes into detail on it in the interview we did with him, but something right. happened. Yeah. There was some tension and he, yeah, that was then, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we also, we did an interview with Susan Rogers. That was quite, oh, yeah. right. She was such a sweetheart. And, uh, uh, you know, we talked to Dave Rusan, who built the famous cloud guitar. Oh, wow. Okay. I yeah, got to check that one out. Yeah. He knew Prince. Prince would come into the music store where he worked when he was like a kid. So wow. he had a lot of really great stories as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I um, being a Prince of Minneapolis sound fan, it, it's just, you, you're just a joy that you brought that and hooked me into there. And then the other uh, stuff you have on your channel as well. But you know, how did you decide the initial foray into Prince? So that's a really good question. So uh, admittedly, in the 80s, uh, I was aware of Prince, but like I was, you know, I was a kid in the 80s, becoming a teenager into the late 80s. Uh, I was more into metal, heavy metal. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew who he was. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't kind of get all of his vibe. I didn't get a lot of him. I kind of knew, I, I had a vague memory of seeing some commercials for Purple Rain. I remember hearing When Doves Cry. I, I knew, I kind of knew he played guitar, but I always thought of him like a Michael Jackson type, like a singer, dancer, entertainer. Right. Um, yeah. I remember, but you know, I remember in like 1990 watching Thieves in the Temple, watching the video going, my God, look at the way that guy can dance. I can't do that. Yeah, the splits. So, yeah. It's, it's not that I thought anything bad of him. I just wasn't really overly into the music. And then, 
of course, you know, he came out years later doing the guitar solo for While My Guitar Gently Weeps in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was um, starting my YouTube channel, you know, I was posting a lot of guitar instructional stuff. And uh, I was just trying some different things. And I said, you know, like, let me just try something different. And I did a reaction to it. And it started getting a lot of views and people were subscribing. But I have to say that the Prince community, you hear different things about Prince fans and the hardcore fans and stuff, but they've been absolutely 100% wonderful to me, my channel, my patron. Like, uh, you know, uh, it, it really, you, you know, Joe, people think of YouTube. I know so many right. people have come, up to, have come up to me and said, I would love to do a YouTube channel, but all the comments, like what if someone said something bad about me or, you know, it, you, you just, you don't, you just develop a thin skin, a, a mm -hmm. thick skin, sorry to that. But, right. um, you know, sometimes people have negative connotations with YouTube, with the comments and stuff, but uh, I've actually found YouTube 95, 99% of the people are amazing. Like it's so weird. And then you kind of become friends with these people around the world. It's just, a, it's a really cool thing. Yeah, and I know with the the Prince fans that are watching YouTube channels are people who weren't necessarily into Prince when Prince was alive or you know at the peak of his yeah, career. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just yeah. like yourself, there the comments that they're writing are like, oh, you know, it's so great you're into this and discovering yeah. his music, and you should check out this, and you know, hey, that's great. Which means he's his music and uh, legacy will live on pretty strong oh. when we're when we're long gone. I'm sure they'll never be. You know, I've learned so much about Prince and I still have a lot more to learn, but there'll never be anyone that can do the things. I know how hard I had to work to become proficient on the guitar. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't, <laughs> you know, uh, one guy said to me one time in the comments, I actually thought it would make a good video. He said, well, you're a really good guitar player. Like, how do you compare to Prince? And I wrote back to him. I said, there's no comparison at all. <laughs> I said, it's not just guitar. It's being an entertainer. It's, it's, it's being a dancer, it's being a musician, it's leading right. a band, running a business. It's uh, it, there's no comparison. Nobody should compare themselves to him. That's just it's a scary thought. <laughs> Nobody should yeah. ever do that. Yeah, I haven't seen him since I think the first concert was 1999 tour that I went to see him. And yeah. just you've mentioned it several times in your video. You're like he had to be on some exercise program and taking care of himself. They said oh. he didn't sleep, but I mean he. It was fantastic live, you know, ne never missed. No, absolutely, yeah. Much slower, which is good. Because Rusty Cooley suggested this to me, I used my RC7 Dean Xenocide 7 string guitar, okay? Um, I thought it was only fair. So I took it through the gamut. I start off just using the tremolo picking. <laughs> My grip was good, it was going back and forth over the strings really nice and easy. Sweet pecking, of course. It was glorious. Riffing, I got a really good attack. So Brian from Yes, You Can Play Guitar is with us and we're honored to have him on the show. And uh, you can go to his YouTube channel, just write in the search on YouTube, Yes, You Can Play Guitar and go through all his videos. And do you ever update the videos, like titles or you just let it fly once you put it out there? And uh, what I, one of the things I do is like, I'll go back to my old videos, which are very hard for me to watch. I think every YouTuber who's stuck with it uh, knows what I'm talking about. You're like, Oh right. my God, look at how I looked or look at how the lighting is or look at, I didn't. Uh, but sometimes I'll update the thumbnails and maybe mm -hmm. do some updates to the, uh, description boxes or the tags or something like that. Or, um, that's about the most I'll do. Okay. Now, now you're talking about, uh, your guitars. We can see your guitars. Uh, yeah. how big is the collection? So of this? my thing is, um, I'm not a vintage guitar guy. I have friends. I've got friends that can't even play, and they have more guitars than I do. But I have. Um, uh, let me see here. So I have three. I have eight guitars. Okay. Some of them are set to different tunings, but uh, I'm very particular about guitars. I'm kind of hoping at some point, uh, maybe getting a sponsorship with a guitar company I like, because people have been sponsored with a far less of a following. So I've right, never, right. I've never 
approach the guitar company about that, but that's something maybe I'll look at in the future. Yeah, you definitely deserve it. I mean, you've given the spotlight to to plenty of guitarists and yeah, just the art of playing guitar. Yeah. Okay, pentatonic scale. I yeah. learned it from you. What what is that all about? Can you break it down to the lay, layman? Yeah, of course. So the pentatonic scale. So penta, okay. penta. It's five notes. Okay. So okay. I often tell people when I'm giving them guitar lessons, I say, uh, you know, the the pentagon. Okay. Okay. Five points or a pentagram if you were into Satan and satanic music back in the eighties. Okay, that's an eighties joke. Probably a lot of people. Are okay. Uh, so anyway, so you have you have the, your major pentatonic scale and you have your minor pentatonic scale. And of course, you know, they say, uh, you know, uh, pentatonic scale is, you know, Jimmy Page's favorite scale. Uh, you know, it's it's just a staple in rock music. Led Zeppelin, a lot of the riffs, a lot of the licks are written around that scale. It's uh, And then when I think of the major pentatonic scale, I think I pull out those licks when I play country music or when you have Southern rock like the Allman Brothers. Mm -hmm. Dickie Betts, those guys, uh, they really use right. that scale a lot too. Fantastic scale. Yeah, you mentioned it a lot during Prince's solos as well. So that that's why Absolutely. Yeah. I, I brought it to, you know, yeah. light there. And then you have what's called the blues scale. You can have a major blues scale and a minor blues scale. Technically, it's a hexatonic scale because there's six notes in it. Okay. But, uh, and so it's just an addition to the blues scale, which are great too. And I've seen Prince use that one sometimes too. Very common. Now, how about as a guitarist when they say it, sometimes it's best to give, you know, the playing some space in between the notes? I think you that's like, that's yeah. an absolute, like, if we're thinking about, like, Dave Gilmore kind of thing from mm -hmm. Pink Floyd. Right, right. Absolutely. Sometimes it's what you don't play matters as much as what you do play. That's another mm -hmm. saying you hear in guitar. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, Brian up in Western Quebec in yeah. Canada. And uh, you, you, like, you like the outdoors. I saw you did... A few outdoor videos you know uh yeah i love the outdoors we're kind of um i'm gonna be honest joe I, I am kind of a i'm not a social um i am a bit of a recluse by nature i kind of like kind of keeping to myself yeah. but, right. but it's kind of funny like a lot of my friends on social media and youtube they're like you're an introvert i'm like actually i'm an introvert that learned to be an extrovert but uh <laughs> you know i kind of like i just go like you know when i see people like, hey how are you doing <laughs> right right a, uh, a local musician asked me if I'd play in a band or something last night. I said, no, I'm sorry, man. I'm just kind of, <laughs> I keep to I'm myself. Just, <laughs> That's just how I am. I've learned to be that way. Right. Yeah. T tough when you're trying to get gigs in the music business, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, uh, looking back, uh, when I kind of learned about, when I was actually learning about the music business and learning and the industry, like on guitar, I had a lot of really good guitar teachers, but I didn't have anyone wising me up to the business. I had to learn uh, a lot just on my own through trial and error. And, you know, that was another thing I was hoping to be able to uh, share on my YouTube channel for some of the musicians coming up. Like I did a video a few months ago about like my top 10 warning flags when you're playing in a band or right. that type of stuff. Um, uh, it's, it's tough. And I got to a point where I'm like, you know what, if I can just be a regional musician making some good money from gigs on weekends, I would be happy with that. But I think looking back, I uh, I have a certain type of personality, Joe. I, I think I've like lightened up a little bit with age, but uh, type A could be intense, especially when it came to business, but I was big on people keeping agreements. So if I played in bands with, where, with guys and we had business agreements and people weren't keeping them, mm -hmm. um, I didn't have patience for that stuff. You know, I don't know, you know maybe – Maybe my communication skills could have been better, but uh, it was just a common thread I noticed with a lot of musicians in a regional sense. They would complain about, oh, if I only had a good paying gig, and then when you end up playing with them, you see kind of they don't pull their weight and they don't do what needs to be done, and you're kind of like, okay, like this isn't kind of like the decision, the discussion we had mm -hmm. when we started this. So, you know, I'm sure I wasn't perfect to deal with either, but uh, uh, even now, like the thought of playing in a band, as I said, I had a fellow message me last night, I'm like, oh my god. I'd rather just do YouTube and teach guitar because it's kind of like yeah. control everything. I'm the master of my own fate. Like I would never, that's another thing too. I don't like to put my fate in other people's hands. Right. And you, and you're doing really well with that, with the YouTube channel and uh, also the Patreon channel. And yeah. you've got somebody coming, knocking on the door in a little while to, for a, for a lesson, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I teach yeah. guitar and, uh, and music full time. That's my actual job. And I also do YouTube. That's what I do. Right. Right.
Yeah. So, so we were talking before we went, we went uh, on air and you said that I'm not a metal guy. And I thought to myself, I, I have had some hard rock and guitar. I had, uh, um, well, the drummer from the Crow Mags. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, and a story that, that happened, I needed to keep my show was like on new year's Eve, but I had to DJ a wedding slash new year's Eve gig. And I left the, uh, the interview with the Crow Mags on, on a loop at the station. And it was on for 12 hours. All you heard was like, I don't know, death metal or hardcore music, right? Hardcore, yeah. Yeah, hardcore. And somebody actually called me the next day and was wondering if, if, if I was okay, what happened? Because yeah. all they heard was the Crow Max for 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny. So for me with metal, I, I'm more drawn to, um, I like, like, I like a lot of different styles of music, you know, like when I was coming up, uh, you know, when I played the circuit, I was doing a lot of country music. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to change. I had to learn like how to play country music, country licks, change my guitar rig completely for that. But uh, um, with, but even though I like hard rock and metal, like I've always been drawn more to virtuoso type players. And it's interesting when you mentioned, I, I, I'm hoping that I'm correct with this, but the, the band Suicidal Tendencies, so they were kind of a punk thrash crossover Man, they're still going, but back in the day, they had a lead guitar player, and his name was Rocky George, and he was scary good. He's one of my favorite guitar players. I'd actually like to interview him. I, I think he went on to play with Fishbone. But, oh, okay. Uh, he played with the Cro Mags for a while. I think he sat in with them, and a uh, uh, scary guitar player. Like he's someone wow. I would love to sit down and trade licks with and talk to for sure. But uh, but I've always been drawn more to like the virtuoso type mm -hmm. uh, uh, guitar playing. And musicianship of any instrument really is it's weird because i'm a guitar player but when i do a reaction video the first thing i look at is the drummer in the band yeah it's interesting how you you've given your breakdown and reaction and analysis of prince's drummers yeah. throughout the different players and uh michael bland and john blackwell and yeah. um i'm always interested when you're you're going deep into it because it's more than just oh that's a cool song and you know you're you stop it and give a little uh detailed analysis of it so do you um go ahead sorry Joe, but i was just going to say, but you can't always win because then people don't like it when you stop yeah yeah you mentioned so that yeah, a few times. Yeah. It's like, it's, i'm like guys I'm, I'm getting older here like sometimes i'll just go to the kitchen i get something i forget what i get uh, what i'm going to get like uh i i had this hit this milestone a couple of months ago i had needed something from the kitchen so i get up work and i get up i go to the kitchen forget what it was i come back i sit down i remember what it was and i went back into the kitchen and i forgot again so mm -hmm. I'm telling people, I'm like, well, I, sometimes I have to hit stop and say what it's on my mind or I'll forget. Right, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in that club, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting near. I'm getting near 59. So, there yeah, you go. I'm in the club. Yeah. So so uh, have you heard back from any of the, the Prince music? Well, I know you had Morris on, on the show. How about the other musicians? Have you heard back any comments? Um, Like from Scotty Boat, like the other people we've interviewed? No, or? the 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 musicians and Prince's band about the comments and stuff like um, that. We, we know people are out there watching. Yeah. So we're in a really weird time. Uh, when you contact people for interviews, like I was trying to do it in a professional way. Like I don't like bugging people on their social media. Mm -hmm. um, like I try and find out whatever their business contact is. And then I like to do it by email and stuff, but we're going through a really dry period right now. And I don't know if it's because so many channels are doing interviews or because everyone's on the road right now, it's the summer. This is, you know, the, this is how they're making their money. Right. If you're a musician now, for most, you know, you got to be out in the road playing. That's how you make your money. Uh, so it's been kind of a, a dry time. But um, so, uh, but I'm hoping to have a few more interviews down the road for sure. Yeah, you and you and the solitary adventure, Chris, right? Yeah. If anything yeah. that's Prince related, usually, mm -hmm. uh, if Chris wants, uh, right. he'll join me, and and he's just awesome to have. Uh, yeah. and if it's, maybe if it's an interview that he can't make, or maybe, uh, for whatever reason, I want, I'm going to start having my patrons who are fans interviewing with me. Oh, that'd be, yeah, they'll definitely have questions. Yeah. That's yeah, for so, sure. So it's, it's, I think that's another great way I can give back to patron and say, okay, like you know, we might have to do a draw or something to pick who's going to join me, but that, that's right. a good way through my medium of having people meet, you know, the people that they're fans of. Yeah, that, that, that'd be a great promotion for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, now let me ask you, sticking on the, the Prince feel, off the top of your head, do you have a, a favorite video that you 
you know, reacted to and, and, and give us a reason why? Um, so I reacted to a lot of Prince videos. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's hard for me to go back and watch. I'll watch some of my old videos and go, oh, the lighting, oh, this, oh, that. But um, I have a really a spot in my heart for Sometimes It Snows in April. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful song. And I, I had a very sentimental connection to something in my life with that. So I, I'm going to say probably that song. But I think when I responded to it, I just did the audio, which is very rare. Like I, I don't very often respond to react to an audio but okay. I, you know i had a lot of people saying no it's it's uh i think it was last year and i think uh prince's uh death date was coming up right and i listened to it and uh it was a very profound song there's something about the melody in the song uh and uh, we did a deep dive on patreon a few weeks ago onto one of the mantra shows where he's playing with uh, third eye girl mm -hmm. and i believe they did that song as well it's just uh, amazing so i'm gonna say that song and that my reaction to that song was very Probably my favorite. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely a one of his most emotional songs that he ever yeah. that he ever wrote, and I think he he wrote it on the day he passed away. Yeah, wow. That, that, that's that's uh, what I read about that. So wow. So Brian, yes, you can play guitar. Anybody can do it. Any age, even even a knucklehead like me. Well, Joe, let me ask you this question. Okay. okay. And I talk about this when people come in uh, to, for lessons, right? So Joe, we don't, you know, we don't have to get into telling people where you live or anything, but the town that you live in, if we did a poll, we walked around and knocked on every door and said, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Just doing a poll. Uh, is there a guitar in the house? There's probably a guitar in most of the houses in the community that you live in because, hey, it's portable. And let's be honest, cool people play guitar. Right. Cool people. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so if, if there's guitars in 80 or 90% of all the houses, is there 80 or 90% of those people, is there a good guitar player in those houses? Mm -hmm. Do you think so? How, what's the percent? So if, if there's going to be a guitar in almost every household in the community okay. you live in, is right. there a really good guitar player in every one of those houses that has a guitar? I'm going to say no, but no. am I wrong? Okay. No, you're right, right? It's right. a very disproportionate ratio. So a lot of people mm -hmm. are like, why? And some people be like, well, I don't know, like, I don't think someone goes into a music store and says, you know, I'm going to buy that guitar on the wall and it's going to look great in my closet for 10 years or I'm going to suck. Mm -hmm. uh, so why is it right? There's a lot of misconceptions about learning guitar. Uh, a lot of people that are just completely crazy. And you see these ads even on YouTube with people saying, you don't need to learn theory and you don't need to do this. People are always looking for the easy way, you know, but the big thing is, is someone will get a guitar and they don't, they don't know what the hell to do. So for a lot of people, although YouTube's wonderful, I have a YouTube channel, but some people will sit down and they'll just kind of say, okay, and they'll hit a, a lesson on YouTube, watch it for 20 seconds, go, I call this the YouTube cycle. Eh, let's do something else. Eh, right. Let's do something else. Let's see. So it goes on for an hour and then before they know it, a year's gone by and they're not any better. Mm -hmm. You need a methodology, right? YouTube's okay. wonderful. I've got a channel. Uh, it, it's great, but you know, if, we don't say to kids when they're of age to go start grade school, we don't say, ah, just stay home, watch YouTube instead. Right, you need right. a method methodology. You need a practice plan. People don't know how to practice. They don't know what they're supposed to be working on. They're not supposed to, be, they don't know how to hold the guitar. They don't know how to do this. They don't know. They need someone sitting there just saying, okay, no, this is the plan. Learn this today, work on it next week. I'll give you more. We're going to progress. Right. Those steps, right. So, uh, you know, but people don't, they, they don't get it. A lot of people don't get it. Uh, some people do and they, they get a good instructor or whatever. Some people will pick up the guitar a couple of times and say, oh, I guess I don't have it. I'm not playing like Yngwie Momsen or Eddie Van Halen. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, it's like, no, they didn't sound like that when they picked it up either. So uh, that's the big thing. And also one of the things I do on my channel too, uh, Joe, is I advertise for people that are kind of really stuck on guitar, whether you're a beginner, or you've been playing for a while, people can, can, can contact me for like a one-on-one -on -one online consultation. Okay. I can help them through that situation with, what they need to work on and explain some things. So, and they're not locked into lessons doing that too. They can just book a consultation whenever they want. And that that's uh, the links are right on, on your YouTube. Yeah. Yes. You can yeah. play guitar, right? Yeah. Or yeah. they can email me at yes. You can play guitar at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I do know how to play uh, one song on an instrument. Uh, when the saints go marching in, I could play it on piano. There you go. <laughs> so an ex girl, an ex girlfriend years ago, I told her I could play the piano. Yeah. And uh, actually, she became my wife, my first wife. But yeah, <laughs> I was invited to her house with her family to meet for the first time. 
And uh, she, after dinner, she says, oh, he knows how to play the piano. And okay. it was right there. And they're all excited for me to play it. And I said, shoot, I'm in big trouble here. So I always make the joke. I played a 20 minute rollicking version of when the saints go marching. Well, you know what? If I'm ever down, uh, which I probably will be at some point in, in your neck of the woods, right? We'll, uh, we'll do a jam and then we'll go out to Texas Roadhouse. It's like my favorite. Oh America. yeah. There you go. Yeah. And the other thing is too, I don't know about New York state, but, uh, uh, when I travel, when I've traveled in Ohio and Pennsylvania, it's the Waffle House. <laughs> There's Waffle House signs everywhere. Yeah, I don't think up here I haven't noticed it, but yeah, yeah. I uh, I know down in Connecticut where we used to live was like Cracker Barrel and stuff like that. Oh, I've been to Cracker Barrel too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, a lot, lot of you know, you go out on the road. You know, we were talking. We both don't like to drive as much as we used to. So, yeah. Uh, but you do see a different part of Canada and, and the U.S. and how, how far are you from Montreal by driving? Uh, so I think Montreal is a couple hours away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we were there every summer, I'd say from 2001, going to the Montreal Jazz Fest. And you There know, you go. And and some of the best there. eating in the world. Like uh, somebody right. feed Bill did a uh, an episode of that on Netflix. But uh, not the best city to be driving in, folks. You're better to park somewhere <laughs> and get a, a taxi or an Uber. Yeah, what's at the 15 and the 40 and the roads out there? Yeah, and, but you say it's worse in Toronto, right? Yes, there's no wow. comparison. I think yeah. with Toronto, it's, uh, sometimes when you get stuck in those uh, those traffic jams, like I've I've been fortunate to time it right when I've had to fly through Toronto, where I just hit the right time to just. <laughs> but that doesn't happen too often. Normally, I'm stuck in a traffic jam of some sort. Right. I got to ask you one final question. Yeah, of course. Okay. How, how's your little doggy? I saw her, the doggy was cooling out the other day what, what's your dog's name My, our dog's name is poochie poochie okay yeah. and so well, what like, breed what breed i don't even know what breed he is he's he's uh, upstairs with his mama there she's uh okay uh, he's working in her office but he uh he's going to be 17 he's the tiniest little dog but my god his vertical vertical jump joe is like this dog is just crazy oh, wow, I, still <laughs> still oh, yeah. in it's hilarious yeah yeah i got our dog uh in in the back room because you know, inevitably should should make her presence known there you go. <laughs> with the barking. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hey, Brian, hopefully one of many times in the in the future that uh absolutely we talk to each other. This this has been great. Yeah. And uh yes, you can play guitar. Brian with uh his guitar instruction, his reaction videos. You know, you can go right into his description and you know, a one on one consultation and the Patreon channel as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. You're a busy guy. I, I am busy, but that's the way I like it. That's right. So thanks, Brian. Thank you, Joe. Okay.